Platformers can be some of the most fun games to play with relatively simple mechanics to develop. While playing platformers might be a blast, if you're a beginner, developing them might feel like this. In this series, we'll make our own platformer step by step. Keeping in mind this series is for beginners, I'll start very simple and I'll add some complexity as we go along. The assets I created for this video can be found in a link down below on my itch.io page. Since this is my first beginner tutorial, I'll give a very quick rundown on how to install and set up Unity. If you already have that done, feel free to skip ahead, I'm not the YouTube police. First, we'll download Unity Hub, link below. Open it up, click Installs, and you can add the version of Unity you want to use. I'll be using 2020.2 for this tutorial, but if you're watching this 100 years from now, you can go ahead and use 2020.3. Next up, we'll install Visual Studio for coding. The community version is free. Open up Visual Studio Installer. I'm lazy and still use 2017, but it's fine to use whatever. Click Modify and select Game Development with Unity, then click Modify at the bottom right. Back to Unity Hub. Create a new project. We'll select 2D from the templates because of the type of game we're looking to make. Then give it whatever name you want. I'm just going to call mine Platforming Game for now. Click Create and it will open up Unity. Finally, we have to click Edit, Preferences, External Tools, and then set our external script editor to Visual Studio. So when we double click a script, it automatically opens up Visual Studio for us. Now that we're all set up, we can get started in Unity. I use the 2x3 layout. I personally find it to be the best and it's used by a lot of developers here on YouTube. If it's not there, you can always pause the video here and copy the layout, or just use your own. Let's start off by creating a new folder for our textures followed by a subfolder for our tile maps. If you watch my mouse, I'm doing this all in the project window. This is where all your folders and assets will be stored. You know, in the folder that says assets. Next, I'm going to drag in my cave tile set texture that I found in the description of this video. And I'm going to place that in the textures folder. In our import settings, we want to set our pixels per unit to 16. This means every 16 pixels represents a meter in our game. We'll set the sprite mode to multiple so we can split it up into tiles. And for clean pixel art, we want to set the filter mode to point and format to RGBA32. We can now open our sprite editor and click slice. We want to set the type to grid by cell size and make sure each cell is 16 by 16. You can then confirm the slice and click apply. You'll know it worked when you can click on the tiles individually. Next, we're going to set up tile map data. Right click in the hierarchy window and select 2D and then tile map. We'll then open the tile palette window and create a new tile palette. I'm just going to call my palette cave and save it to the same folder as a texture. After that's complete, we want to drag in our texture to divide it into tiles. I'm going to save those tiles in a new folder because there'll be a ton of them. After you select the folder, it will divide up the individual tiles. Alright, all the mundane stuff is done and we can now begin to get something on our screen at least. First we'll rename our current tile map to background and add a new tile map called Foreground. We want the player to be able to interact with the foreground and not collide with background elements. Make sure to set the foreground layer order to 1, so it appears in front of our background. Open up our tile palette window and make sure you have background selected. We can then select an empty tile and paint our whole background with it. Now select our foreground and we can paint in a level. I'm just going to make one big safe enclosed space where I can never die and hide the fact that I'm terrible at platformers. But feel free to make whatever or be bad at whatever games you want. Whatever level you decide to make, be absolutely sure you're drawing it to the foreground. And if you want to go ahead and spice up your background, you can select that layer and draw something there. I'll add some bricks and a spooky skull, but if you have some creativity and don't scare easily, you can go ahead and add two skulls.
When you're happy with your level, you can press play and see how it looks. I like to leave at least one empty tile at the bottom, just to center the character a bit. Speaking of the character, let's get them into the game. I'm going to give textures a subfolder called characters, and drag in a nice little texture I found also down in the description. I'm going to use the same import settings as we used for our cave texture. Again, the pixels per unit is 16. This character is just under 24 pixels tall. So knowing that 16 pixels equals 1 meter, it gives our world and character a nice sense of scale. The grid for this sprite is 24 by 32. The difference with this sheet is that we want the pivot to be at the character's feet. So set pivot to bottom. I'm then going to open up the sheet and just drag the first sprite in for now. Don't forget to set the layer to be the same as the foreground. Doing all that should have our character appear on the screen. But nothing will happen if we press play, so let's slap some physics on this bad boy. We'll start by adding a Capsule Collider 2D for our character. A lot of videos might suggest box colliders, but the curvature of capsules can help your character get over small bumps or any mistakes you make with collision. We want to fit the size to our character. I'm just going to eyeball the x value, but for y, you can set it to 1.6 and set the offset halfway up to 0.8 to keep it at the bottom of our character's feet. Colliders will move our character, so we're going to have to add a rigid body 2D. This makes the physics engine aware of our character and its collider. It is now a victim of gravity like the rest of us. So to stop our character from rolling like a ball, we want to put a constraint on the z rotation. Just because our character has physics doesn't mean it can understand what it needs to collide with. Here's a visual aid to help understand that. So we clearly have to let physics know what we want to collide with. For now we can just add a tile map collider to our foreground. We'll use a better solution later on, but this works for now. If you see colliders on the wrong squares, that means you've drawn your background tiles to the foreground or vice versa. You can just open up the tile palette and fix that up. Pressing play will have our character do what SpaceX can't, and land safely on the ground. Well, that's the end of our setup phase in part 1. In the next video, we'll take our first few steps into spooky scary coding, and cover simple locomotion such as moving and jumping. Thanks for watching, cheers!